Hey everybody, welcome. It's Andrew Ainsworth Golf Academy. As always, a warm welcome. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video today. Very exciting time of year. Lots of new product launch coming out, isn't there? New TaylorMade, new Callaway, and finally, I'm starting to get my hands on these. Some new G410. What should we call it? G410 or G410? I think 410 sounds better, but you can call it what you like. The I've got today, I've got the iron. Um, obviously the replacement to the G400, which was hugely successful for me in my academy here in training in England. Um, did an awful lot of fitting with G400 and the people who bought it loved it. So when I saw my ping rep back in, I guess, November time and he showed me this club, which we're allowed to stay very quiet about, I'm always slightly worried that the new model is not going to be any better than the old model. Um, and I'm very pleased to say this is better. Only a little bit, but definitely better. So stay tuned and I'll tell you all about the new Ping G410 iron. So what I'm going to do is split the video into two halves. I'm going to tell you all about the tech spec of it. And then we'll get over in the hitting area and hit some balls. So if you're not too keen on how it works and the techie bits, then I suggest you maybe fast forward the, uh, the video, maybe four or five minutes and you'll get to the hitting stuff. But I'd love you to stay tuned just so I can tell you a bit more about this club. I'm going straight to the Ping website to start with. And this is what they're saying about the new G410. They're saying that we took a game improvement technology and reshaped it. Definitely agree with that and I'll show you in a minute giving the model less offset and a shorter blade length while maintaining MOI, MOI, resistance to twisting, yeah, to create the most forgiving iron on the market for its size, which is a sweeping statement, but they could be right, but I'm sure they are, uh, to generate power, face hinging and a large flexing zone increases ball speeds for more distance and higher peak trajectories so that you're able to hit and hold more greens. Feel and sound are improved and a co-moulded cavity badge that dampens vibrations. That's the kind of overall picture. Let's just dig in. I'll bring up some um, pictures over here somewhere so that you can kind of follow along with what I'm talking about. Let's go in and look at this larger flexing zone. Uh, pictures coming up. The more flexible free moving face amplifies ball speeds with greater distance and higher maximum height, allowing you to hit less club into the green with the control and precision to hold the putting surface. So basically what they've been able to do here is make the face flex a little bit more um, to increase the ball speeds. Very clever. Um, this is the biggie for me. And if we give you some overhead shots here, the look of this compared to the G400 is much improved. I didn't mind the G400, um, which is on there somewhere. It did look, I guess if you're being critical, a little bit chunky, you know, with the top edge and the, the bottom of the sole. We'll maybe give you some pictures um, alongside just to sort of show you that, highlight it. But they've really made this club look fantastic. 10% um, less offset compared to G400, shorter blade length. The G410 presents a visually appealing, more refined shape. I agree. We've got this toe hose or weighting. The face and cavity structure deliver faster ball speeds, save weight for expanding the perimeter weighting. Weight savings are concentrated in the toe and hosel to increase MOI by 8%. All good stuff so far. We've got still got core eye technology, which we've seen in previous models. They've just basically made it bigger, I think is what they're saying. Um, cascading sole design, deep top rail undercut. They've expanded it, made the, the off center hits even better, which is great. This is quite an interesting one. We've got this co molded cavity badge, co molded aluminum or aluminium, depending on which side of the pond you sit. For me, it's aluminium. And the elastomer badge dampens vibrations to deliver powerful, reassuring feel. Um, in the past, they've put in swing weights, which have been kind of glued in. And we have had issues over the years with certain ping models where the swing weights and the elastomer bits have fallen out, they've become unglued. I've seen that quite a bit, and that should override this problem. The other thing to say is the finish on the G400 didn't wear particularly well. It got scratched and it kind of looked a little bit old very quickly as it rubbed around in the bag. 
The finish on the G410 here, I think, is going to hold its looks a lot better. So that's another plus. Um, let's just have a quick look here on specifications in terms of loft. We've got the power spec um, available on here, but not the retro spec loft. So just to give you an example, 7-iron loft, I'm just reading again straight off my iPad off the website here. In standard form, the length's 37 inches long. Standard loft is 30. The power spec loft is 28 and a half. So strengthening it one, one and a half degrees. Um, pitching wedge is 44 and a half inches long. Power spec in that is 42.5. Personally, don't know why you go down the power spec loft route because it just creates some massive gaps and uh, you know you end up with a four iron of 19 degrees loft which a lot of golfers can't hit anyway so unless you're looking for very low ball flights or something out of the ordinary i would stick to the standard loft um shaft wise quite a lot of shafts which we've got to talk about all the previous shafts are still running in the steel we've still got the awt 2.0 regular stiff extra stiff great shaft True Temper Dynamic Gold in S300X100. We've then got two other Dynamic Golds, the 105 and the 120. We've got uh, KBS Tour in Regular Stiff and Extra Stiff. We've got Pro Modus, Regular Stiff, Extra Stiff. We've got Project X and we've got XP95. So Ping are really starting to push the boundaries on shaft options, which is great. And we've also got a brand new graphite shaft, the Ping Alta CB Red in soft, regular, regular and stiff. So a lot more shaft options available. Obviously, all the usual color coded combinations going from four degrees flat all the way up to five degrees upright with everything in between. That's all I need to tell you at the moment. Let's get over in the hitting area and see how this G410 performs. Let's go. Okay, made it to the hitting area with the new Ping G4 10 iron, 7 iron, 30 degrees of loft, standard length, standard lie, fitted with the AWT stiff shaft. Got chrome soft balls down on the deck, and I am at the belfry, and I've got 170 yards for the flag. Greens are set to soft. Let's get in there and see how we go, shall we? A little bit bottomy there. Slightly bottomy, but we're going to take it. Should we dive in and have a quick look at the numbers on that? So it wasn't a good strike, but uh, this is what club testing is all about. You know, it's not going to be perfect every time, is it? Remember that um, GC2 about HMT slightly underdoes club speed. So we're, we're probably closer to about 89 miles an hour of club speed. Got a ball speed there of about 118. Carry distance 165. Now, in warm-up, I was consistently getting like a 164, 165 carry from, <laughs> there's the thin, there's the confirmation of the thin strike there, launch angle 13.6, so that was really off the bottom. I'm surprised they got that much backspin actually from a thin strike, so let's try and get that launch angle up to uh, somewhere near 18, 19 degrees. Remember I'm a very low ball hitter, so, but that was thin, but hey. Club dealt with the off-centre hit. Let's go again. That was better. Not bad, that one. Again, carry should be... It's, a still a, it's a fraction heavy, if I'm being critical, which I'm very happy to be in my own goal swing. Um, but the numbers held up very nicely. Again, well, club speed's dropped off a fraction. Launches up to about where I would normally be, 19 degrees with a 7 iron. Spin at 4.8. Remember the spin rate will fluctuate dependent on strike. That's down to me. Carry distance again, 164. Go one more. What are my impressions of this club? My impressions of this golf club is, first of all, the look of it is superb. Less offset, smaller compact head. Definitely a better looking club than G400 was. Performance is there. Um, it's a club that's going to appeal to a lot of golfers, you know, varying standards of golfers. I could see single figure golfers putting this in the bag all the way up to higher handicappers. It's got something for everybody. Get the right shaft in there and the right setup, and Bob's your uncle. Should we go one more? 
Loving this club, really enjoying hitting it. And that, that is the first proper strike I've got. That was absolutely bang out the middle, that one. I can't hit it an awful lot better. Wow, goodness, let's give you the data on that. There's a big jump in numbers here. Should never ever base a club purely on distance. Uh, there's lots of other factors in there like dispersion, forgiveness and feel and looks, but that one clocked in there, club speed 89, probably closer to about 92, so I did hit that pretty good. Launch still a little bit low, that's me. And span at just under 5,000 revs, and I got a carry distance there of 175 yards. Now that's pretty powerful. Um, very, very impressive. So that was just three swings with me going at it. What I will also do is put together another review where I'll swing the club at slightly slower speeds because I appreciate that not everyone's swinging the club at 90, 92 miles an hour. There'll be a lot of you golfers out there who are swinging the club, quite rightly so, at 75, 80, 85 miles an hour. So, you know, me hitting the ball hard and flat out is probably not the fairest of reviews for a lot of people out there. So um, I will do a separate view in the next couple of weeks with slower club speed. Let's sum this club up overall. Is it better than the G400? Yes. If you had G400, would you change the G410? No. Honestly, I would not recommend any of my customers to change because the differences are so subtle. It is an improvement, but you know, to change over, probably not going to see much difference. If you had maybe the Gs or the G30s or G25s, you'd definitely see a difference, for sure. Absolutely no doubt about that. Custom fittings, obviously the key thing in this, you've got to get fitted, got to get the right spec and set up. Price-wise, not quite sure where these are going to settle at the moment. Um, my gut feeling will be a 7-iron set. Um, I'm thinking will probably retail just under £700. So I could be wrong. I'd like to try and think we can keep a steel set like 4 to Pitching Wedge or 5 to Sand Iron at £699 UK. Pounds. But uh, I'll have to come back to you on that because I haven't even got a price list yet. I don't know how much these things cost, but that's where I'm hoping. For steel, that would be. And I'm thinking maybe 749 round about that mark for, for graphite. So there we have it. Thanks for watching. It was exciting. It was fun to hit. Ping, wonderful job on your new iron. I have every confidence that I will be doing really well with this club. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you think it's worthy of that. Bye for now.